from our studio in Southern California, the hotbed of car culture, covering all things automotive. Welcome to In the Garage with Dennis. Here's your host, Dennis Pitsenbarger. Welcome, everybody, to In the Garage. Our first show is right here in front of you. The reason for doing this is because I want to let you have some fun with me and my form of automotive tomfoolery. We're going to do everything from test new and old cars to go to our friend's shops, everything from gasser builds to brand new shop builds. It's all going to be right here, right now. We're going to have a ton of fun and let you come along for the ride. Now, this is the best part. You can be part of the program. Go to InTheGarageWithDennis.com and check out the website. You can find our Facebook and Twitter pages and certainly be part of the family that is the In Garage family. One of the things we also want to do is make sure and thank our sponsors. This show is brought to you in part by both Craftsman and Royal Purple. Now, today's show is going to be something that I'm going to hold near and dear to my heart. Why? Because Big Daddy Ed Roth is going to be emulated with our friends over at Gas. Galpin Auto Sports and my friend Dave is going to give you a little tour of what those cars mean to him and his recreations and revelance of what those cars have done for so many decades. And after that, Gassers. That's right. Gasser cars is something and I love. Nose in the front, big shifts, big power, and a lot of fun. If you get a chance, one more time, go to Den- in the garage with Dennis.com and we'll have some fun. But Really quickly, before we get started, we're going to give you a little tidbit from one of our sponsors. Royal Purple High Performance Street Motor Oil is recommended for vehicles no longer under manufacturer warranty and for those seeking a higher level of performance and protection. HPS outperforms leading synthetics and conventional lubricants for both diesel and gasoline engines and is fortified with high levels of zinc phosphorus, anywhere additives, and Royal Purple's own Cinerlic. Additive technology, HPS for maximum performance, improved performance, and better efficiency. But guess what, boys and girls? Grab your belts, pull them tight. We're about to get the show started. Welcome, everyone, to the Galpin Auto Sports Museum, one of the best private collections you'll ever see. I'm going to get my friend Dave Shutton here to talk about some of these beautiful cars. Let's go take a peek. Come on, Dave. Dave Shutton, uh, you know, you and I have been friends for a while now, and I got to say, thank you for letting us come in the Gas Museum, because this collection of cars, more importantly, with Big Daddy Ed Roth cars is something that to me is a position that puts you into not only curator, but these are cars that you've built with your own two hands. These are cars that, you know, you have to be of a select few to actually restore. Um, You know, what is your feeling with these cars? Because I mean, we have Dragula to my left, you know, Orbitron down there, uh, you know, so many of these great cars. What do they mean to you? Well, I have a, a huge personal vested interest in all these cars you know whether it's the mysterian you know that i recreated or the orbitron that i restored or any of this stuff it's just a huge responsibility i think to make sure that they're done right and then after they're done right that they're taken care of properly and preserved so they last and we're not having to replicate something that was already replicated again because it keeps breaking or whatever how do you take on a task like that because these cars you know, there's really no documentation. There isn't a build sheet sitting underneath the back seat. <laughs> um, what kind of work or what kind of, you know, I guess, again, you have to take another job on a historian to find out how to make these cars truly correct as you either recreate them or in some cases like Orbitron, uh, you know, restore them. Now you're 100% right. The biggest challenge in doing any of these cars is first you have to know what was available at the time. So I have a retarded collection of vintage catalogs and magazines and stuff. And you can pretty much pinpoint when something came into production in the aftermarket industry, when it went away, you know, what was used, who made what, blah, blah, blah. You know, between that and just a whole bunch of like-minded friends, you know, all over the U.S. and even some abroad who hoard all this eclectic crap that I use to put all this stuff back together, that's how we do it. What has been the biggest hurdle to overcome on any of these cars? There was, is there one piece that was so hard to find? I mean, you know, I love the story. I keep going back to the Orbitron, literally being found behind a Tijuana whorehouse, basically. Right. Um, you know, that was probably maybe the funniest story to find one of these cars. But there has to be one piece of the puzzle, 
of one of these cars that was just, you know, either, you know, that, that, that thorn in your side, so to speak? Um, with Orbitron, the hardest part of the entire build was finding the television that went inside the car. Uh, because that's something, you know, that when you look back through the evolution of electronics and all that stuff, the little micro TVs and stuff just came in and went out so fast and nobody cared and they just threw them away and we went on to the next thing. So finding some poor dude that's like <laughs> held onto this TV since 1964, you know, to get that is, is remarkable. And honestly, eBay has helped and hindered the whole thing, you know, equally. Whereas you used to be able to go to a swap meet and find really bitching stuff. Now everybody's selling all their bitching stuff online. So it moved the price up a lot. But on the other hand, when you need a television, you just punch in what you need and save the search and, and it finds you. It took two years, <laughs> but you know, that's how it has to work. If you had to pick one of these and notwithstanding your own personal, I know you have some cars in here that are personal to you. If all of a sudden you and Bo sat down and had a couple beers and he said, okay, Dave, you get to pick one, take it home, own it forever, but you got to give all of them up. What would be the one? Wow, that's a good one. Um, in this room presently, probably the uh, 29 Roadster on Deuce Rails, the old Bonneville car up there. Okay. I'm just curious, you know, because this is a, an amazing collection. And I, I, you know, it's always one of those things where I know when you collect cars, you want to keep adding to it, but ever to have that choice to be basically forced to pick one, it would be tough. For me, I gotta tell you, man, I'd take Dragula. I, I just think it'd be one of the coolest things to own in my world. You say I, that. I built the model. You've never driven it. And well, that thing's horrible to drive. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. It's fun. <laughs> You're still cruising in a coffin, but very uncomfortable. Well, I, I think I think I'd, maybe if you let me drive it, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll change my mind. Okay. Uh, you know, the whole thing with me is, is when I'm done with something, I'm done with it. Like I want to do the next thing. So most of this stuff I've owned and built, you know, at Checked home and whatever. List. And it, it would be, I don't want to move on to something a little different, but I love the history aspect. Uh, the little Ford up there holds, held 13 world land speed records in the fifties. Yeah. I saw the very SCTA fast little stuff. car. Yeah. It, it's pretty neat. Um, what is next for you, uh, build as far as, you know, either personally or, or for the collection, what's next for you? Uh, for the collection and, and for the owners here, Bo and Bert, I'm going to be replicating the once Galpin sponsored backup pickup wheel stander out of a 65 Econoline truck. So that's uh, going to begin in a couple of days. Should take a three, four months to do. It ought to be pretty fun. And we'll have to get it now. Since I missed all the test driving for these, will you take me for a for a hit in one of those? Absolutely, that'd be that's easy. That's fun. <laughs> that's easy. I intend on doing wheelies on Roscoe. Um, we'll see how that goes. Well, we'll have to come back within the garage and make sure we get a shot of that. Dave Shutton, as always, thank you so much for coming by and spending of time course, with man. us. Um, I look forward to my ride in that wheel standard because uh, we do <laughs> love wheel stand Wednesdays. Uh, but we're going to move on and have a little fun with Steve and a gasser and see if I can survive. All right, everybody, the best thing you can do in this show is put your hand up, get it on the shifter, grab a gear, and go into another topic. And I've got my friend Steve Carpenter with me to talk about gassers. And if you know me, and you're going to know me more and more, you know that this is probably one of the coolest chapters in hot rodding there is. And Steve, first off, welcome to the program, man. Nice to see you. Uh, I know you don't recognize me. Nobody does That's with the all beard. Right. You, look little, you look like George Clooney's coming around. I like that. Yeah. I'll take it. Gassers. I know they have a special place in your heart. This is the Galpin Gasser 3, but I know you and I, I've seen you build yep. a lot of cars, but you know, give me your background and your take on gassers and what they mean to you. Well, two things. I've been, my whole life I've been in the hot rodding business, family, second generation. But uh, when I grew up, my father used to take me to races and you know, they always bought me those rat faint t-shirts with these monsters coming out of the cars. The gassers, when I was going to build the first gasser, that was the first time I think 
I thought, you know, I can make a car like I was a kid. Because you're a kid, you always want something nowadays. I can afford it. Let's build it. Sure. The gassers are there. They're, 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 they're monsters. They're crazy. They're Hot Wheels. They're everything in one. Well, they're cartoons. You right. even said it. They, they're, they, they're, to you, they're a cartoon, cartoon on, on wheels. And you can drive them. Um, gassers are interesting because most people don't understand why it sits up so high. And back in the late 50s and in the 60s, when they were drag racing, they thought they stuck the front end up high, of course, it transfers the weight quicker so they could get the traction. Well, what happens on the drag strip always translates to the street. So whatever's, you know, even nowadays, what you racing, what they do on the racing track, people want their street cars to look that way. That's why there's wide bodies and there's trans amp looking cars. That's why there's pro street. Oh, sure. Race so, on Sunday, sell on Monday. Right. And so the gassers is the same thing to me. And I just love them to death because they're just about as fun as you could possibly have trying to drive them. Because when I say try to drive them, <laughs> Trust me, if you want to do them correct, like this one is, all period correct with the old straight axle from the F100, yeah, they're a handful, but let me tell you something, that's exciting. Well, we're going to get to a drive in a second, but I want to talk about the history of this car because you bought it on sight unseen. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not knocking your, your, your shopping choices, but, you know, you kind of got yourself into a little bit of a wicket there. Now, yeah, I go, after I my second gasser, I had the itching to build a, a, a Ford gasser. I had a and I really wanted to build a 57, and I found one on eBay, and it was on the eBay for 30 minutes, and it was like, buy it now, and I saw a picture of it, and it was just looking right, I just, boom, I bought it. And then about, then I said, oh, then I started making the phone calls <laughs> about, about asking the guy about the car, and then when it showed up, I about cried. It, seriously, literally, as a grown man, I about cried. It was not worth $500. Oh. It wasn't worth the tow bill, it wasn't worth anything, and at one point, I thought I was just gonna cut my losses. Right, and Dave Shutton, who you talked to earlier, came up to me and said, look, it's from Detroit. He goes, it's just metal. I go, what do you mean? Just cut it, replace the metal. It's just rust, it's just metal. He's used to that. And he made me feel better about it. But what's nice about this car, it was a gasser for like, as far as I can go back, it's been a gasser since the 60s. Wow. I have the original title from the dealership in Kentucky. I had the newer title from Kentucky when he had it, and, I, and it's pretty much been a straight axle gaster for a long time. There's probably chances there was illegal liquor in the trunk. At some probably. Point. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that, but at the end, remember, this is as a this is a Galpin Gaster three. Yes. It was the worst car, period, that I've ever bought online or even bought, and it, now just you know, it's the best one. Yeah. It, it became the best car. And it really is the best gaster that I've ever done, and I enjoy the hell of it. Now, let's talk about the new motor. Um, I know the other motor was very stout, 400 horse, but a Oh, I have a, a new great mill. story. No, okay, no. Okay. I, was at, I, was at, I was invited to take my car to the Winter Nationals this year at Pomona to put on display in front of the Wally Parks Museum. So I got there early, and I decided to drive around the pits with this car. And I'm putting around the pits, and it's like an old movie star. Think about it. If you're at the Winter National with this car, it's like having an old movie star walking around. People are going crazy. Why well, stopped in front of Bob Tasca's uh, tent? And he's over to look at the car and he's like, whoa, this is great, right? And then here comes John Force ripping up, <laughs> ripping up in a scooter. Where's Bob? You know, oh, what's this thing? And Bob's looking at the car. Well, I got a little excited, got out of the car and started grabbing the throttle mechanism and going, winging it, wing, wing. And I mean, revving it. And all of a sudden I hear this, I, last time I winged it really hard, I was going to go to six grand. I hear this, dink, dink, and the motor went, doot, 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 doot. It completely changed his tone. And oh, you know what no. John Force goes? I've heard that music before and he took off. <laughs> so, I rigid, so I decided, you know what, uh, you know, I, I decided, let's, you know, I had to put in, the motor was gone, drop piston, valve, just started breaking everything apart. So I decided, it happened, so I decided this time, let's just go big or go home, and I went big. Yeah. I mean, the motor, I decided I wanted a car that would run to 8,000 RPM. I wanted it to sound ridiculous, and I still wanted to have a small block in it, be, uh, so I had a lot of help from Ford Racing and Elderbrock, and we put together a pretty little um, little monster, little mini motor, I call it. A little mini motor, well, I love it. Well, you know what? It's time for you and I to go out for a drive in this yes. thing. And I don't know whether he's gonna let me sit in the passenger seat or the driver's seat, but you know what? It's time to go have some fun. Yep. All right, before we take more time with Steve and his gasser, I wanna make sure and thank one of our sponsors, Craftsman Tools. If you're not already a member, make sure and go to craftsman.com and become a member of the Craftsman Club. Craftsman, America's most trusted tool brand. Trust in your hands. Now, Steve, one of the things about this gasser is it's got a lot of special little tidbits. Yes. Obviously, the motor, the rear end. Take me a little walk around through well, this beautiful Well, just rock. so you know, all this lettering is not stickers. This is all hand painted. This is all, everything is done. This gold leaf, silver, it's all done by hand. Even though, everything you see here is all done by hand. It's not, no stickers. I don't like stickers. I think it should be. The, um, the motor itself, of course, um, I went to try to do as, as minimal as possible with the maximum output. 
One of the things you told me about this is when you got it, literally some of the ignition parts were just hanging off of the motor. Yeah, what the guy did, when, like the coil went bad, he'd leave the coil laying in the manifold. The alternator was just shoved over here on the wheel well, and there was an alternator over there, and there was two coils, you know, and there was distributor caps and extra park plug wires just shoved everywhere in the motor, just laying there. I was just like, you know, it was amazing. Now, like I said, this was nice. It's a an old F100 Ford straight axle. It's original. Um, and he said, everything on this car, I tried to keep authentic as possible. Of course, I, everything's new, of course, and the brakes are drum, which is amazing. Drum, and I had the jelly jar of death, which they called the jelly jar of death, which was the one little master cylinder, which yeah. I keep on here because I think it's cool. You know, but all the other pieces were, uh, the chrome was all redone. Every piece of glass was uh, redone on the car. Another neat feature on this car. say hand fabricated yeah, headers. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, we here, uh, here at Galpin, we, the, guy did, the, the fender wheel headers were all done by hand. Same with the roll cage. The rear end is a Curry all chrome nine inch rear end. Now, these, li these, these ladder bars are old school, original ladder bars that were on the car when I got them. Of course, they were yellow, and I had them, I ha we had them cleaned up and, uh, and I chromed them, but it was, it was, it was a real neat feature. Now, a lot of things about, well, let's go around on this side. You can look at the interior of the car. Now, most people on a gas are black interior standard, used to go black, and you know, I'm, I decided you were thinking about it, and Dave shut you meant earlier said, hey, you know, let's do something different. Well, and here's is different. You've got white, pearl white, gold rope. You've got a Chrysler Imperial, the old 60s Chrysler Imperial 300 speckled carpet. Uh, it's very hard to get. Yeah, I tried to make this car, uh, uh, you know, just, you want to do something, you know, you either want to do it right or you want to do it wrong. I want to make this car a street car. It's not a, you know, you can take it out and drag it, but I don't want people to look at this car and say, oh, it's just an old drag car. I really want to make it like a cross between a, a show car, a street car, something you can take out and drive to, you know, to cruise nights and to car shows, something to have fun. And a lot of different celebrities, in fact, Barry McGuire himself told me that Barrett Jackson was sitting there like that. This was the best gaster he's seen. He goes, you know what, you nailed that's it. That's an amazing. Yeah, you know, Barry, you know, he said, Steve, you nailed it. He looked that's at it. And he goes, and that was, and that's a great compliment because, like I said, the worst one became the best one. Well, let's get inside and go for a rev. Let's put this hood down. Uh, let's do that. You gotta, of course, everything on these uh, old cars fits uh, very close to the diligently. Diligently. There you go. And noise is everything. Standard arm out driving position. I may survive, I may not. All right, thanks everybody for stopping by for this episode of In the Garage. We want to definitely thank Dave Shutton, of course, Steve Carpenter, and everybody here letting us have some fun, including this car here. We want to make sure and say thanks also to Royal Purple and to Craftsman and everyone out there watching the videos. We'll see you in the next one.